Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and a view replay courtesy of SJR46 who as you can see is in a division with Viper Sox and a third player whose name I have forgotten so well done me. This is a pretty good ship but it's not ideal matchmaking, certainly not when there's carriers in play. Uh, the Cossack and the Asashia both have particularly poor anti-aircraft performance and they are the entirety of this team's destroyers so that's that's not great and I think this enemy team, uh, the, the enemy team's CV probably does know it as well. He spends a bit of time buzzing SJR before he then makes a drop on the key. The key ironically has pretty decent AA but it's actually not as good as it used to. It's one of those that got really hurt by the uh, the big changes that got made to AA because it heavily relies on the uh, flak bursts from its 100mm dual purpose guns and uh, flak ain't what it used to be. It used to all contribute towards the DPS figure which made the key quite potent but uh, once it got changed as it did it just wasn't nearly such a, a useful thing anymore. It does still mean it puts up a fair few flat clouds but um, yeah it, it isn't nearly as um, potent as it used to be as an AA platform. Anyway so he's run into this enemy Sen Yang who cannot torpedo him which is uh, a little unlucky for the Sen Yang. That's one of the reasons why I don't play that line very much. It's a very large loss of utility with those ships. And although he has managed to get the kill, it's taken about half his health in the process, which is a little bit painful, but it's still one less enemy destroyer to deal with. And it's also the first blood. Although, as you can see, the enemy team, uh, that actually that Sen Yang managed to get uh, a, a, a kill uh, just before, uh, well, you know what, just after they died? I don't know. I don't know the exact timing. I wasn't paying close enough attention. But anyway, uh, they managed to take one with them. Hello, Samuel. Yes, there's a cat in the background. Are you going to start knocking? Oh, yeah, there we go. He's going to start knocking things over. Of course he is. Not paying attention to him, clearly, which uh, is a capital crime, as anybody that has a cat knows. So one of the downsides, uh, as you can see, this doesn't have particularly good torpedo power, so you do have to be a bit judicious about your use of them. He's also, with the death of the Kutuzov, ended up as being the only other um, person on this flank, aside from his teammate in the key, who is getting fairly heavily focused at this point. There's also still planes buzzing around, because of course the CV is going for the more isolated targets, as they do, and that has put both SJR and his uh, div mate in a pretty poor position. I think it's actually the uh, the sub that just whacked it a bunch there, although he's also run aground, this key doesn't help matters, I think they were trying to reverse and uh, yeah, SJR was trying to get in a position to give them some screening, but it's a, it's a little bit too late to be of. Uh, any particular effect, sadly. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the other reasons why this is so not such a good game. It's a double submarine game. Nobody likes submarines. Well, some people like submarines, but uh, I think by and large people don't like submarines. I certainly have yet to be convinced that they are anything like a good idea, because, you know, spoilers, they aren't. SJR really doesn't have much of a, a choice other than to fall back at this point. Uh, there goes the key and he does have a little bit of help now. There are some people who've come over to this side but yeah this this map in a standard game can be a bit messy and they haven't really been able to take advantage of the other flank. I mean they, they this team in theory has a, a greater presence on that other flag, but on this particular map it's quite easy for people to just filter through the middle at certain points. Certainly a lot easier than on maps like uh, Two Brothers or uh, I don't even know, I can't think of a similar one that's got that kind of more restricted middle area that can still be useful at various times. But there probably are other examples. 
So yeah, they're really on, on the defence of this team. And it's it's not looking great overall. Uh, they've actually got somebody, a uh, Bismarck, that's pushed into the cap. And that's probably not going to end well for the Bismarck. But they're taking people down in the process. Which is uh, not so good. They've taken out one Numex and they're now focusing on another. So although, um, yeah, they in theory had uh, a window of opportunity on the left flank, it's not really panned out because they've had to react to what's happening on this side where the enemy are coming around in much greater force. So uh, <laughs> it's all going a bit sideways. They are making a, a bit of a fight of it though. Um, that Bismarck has indeed gone down. And they've done some substantial damage to the ships that are pushing in on this flank. That guy is now is not looking too healthy. Um, the Normandy's not such a big threat, but if they're firing HE, they do have a lot of barrels. It can still be nasty if you're a destroyer. And then you've still got a submarine, you've still got planes buzzing around, so this is far from a comfortable situation. In fact, this is a very uncomfortable situation. Especially considering that uh, this smoke doesn't last for very long. Cossack doesn't have the uh, um, particularly long-lasting... Uh, is it the same as the... Um, I can't remember what the... I think some British destroyers get a longer smoke. I know something like the Gallant does. But um, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the, how short duration the regular destroyer smoke is compared to Cossack. I honestly can't remember. If you can hear something in the background, by the way, that's Samuel playing with a paperback. If you're wondering what that sort of crunkling noise was. It's not my neighbour banging through their wall for a change. It's Samuel. So there goes the Gneiser now, who actually got sunk there by Viper Sox in his Sashio. There is a bit of an issue here, though. Their cap has been repeatedly interrupted at this stage, and so although they aren't that far behind in ships, the other team does still have more ships overall, so therefore would still have more points, but the gap has been exaggerated by that interruption. And so we're now fighting with uh, a double handicap, you might say, uh, not only uh, do they have to overcome that, that points difference, but they have to stop the enemy from interrupting their cap even more. So it, this is a real uphill struggle at this point. The fact that uh, the enemy's CV is still in play, I mean the only real defence Viper has is his short cooldown smoke. But he's having to use that for defensive purposes as well because he doesn't have a lot of choice here, he has to try and do some damage. Unfortunately, this is a very capable gunboat. It is one of the most capable Tier 8 destroyer gunboats. But it's still a destroyer. And it, that'll only get you so far in this kind of situation. Sometimes having uh, the, the torpedo power is, is more desirable because destroyers with good guns can be annoying and effective. But they also need a lot longer to, uh, to to have that effectiveness really add up as opposed to being able to punch somebody in the face with a couple of torpedoes and take off, you know, 45, 50, 60k damage in one go. You kind of have to work for it in something like a Cossack, especially when you don't have a heal going for you. Now there is, um, I think I was wrong actually earlier when I was saying it was the Senyang he killed. I think it was that Senyang. There were two on the enemy team uh, which I had forgotten so I think it must have been that Senyang which had gotten the uh, the earlier kill. Uh, anyway that was a minor aside it doesn't really matter. Uh, as you can see the planes are being a bit of a pest right now and the sub is clearly going for him. Uh, the Normandy Trying, I think, to deal with the fact that he's got the Sashio somewhere, possibly firing at their own Yorktown. I'm not sure what the Normandy uh, is doing in terms of priority at the moment. Uh, a Sashio, like I said, also has absolutely terrible AA, um, but at least it has a longer 
blasting smoke screens, so yeah. This sub though, uh, this at least we can deal with a little bit sooner. Uh, he's basically right on top of it. This thing hasn't had a chance to get away. The only real fly in the ointment here is that the planes keep spotting him, and so this sub's had a really good idea of where he is, but he's been able to dodge out of the way at least. And this is all quite fortunate because his sonar is on cooldown, so he didn't have any excess warning beyond the regular torpedo spotting range. So that's both of those out of the way. Uh, Viper Sox getting the Normandy and SJR of course getting the sub. But they're still behind on points and time is starting to run out now. So this is this is getting tight. There is this Hipper who is quite healthy. There is the enemy sub and there is the enemy CV. They've got their own CV still in play but their own CV is quite badly mauled at this point. They're at something like a little less than half health. And if the Hippo is able to catch sight of them, which they might very well do, considering that the Hornet has planes in the air and is actively trying to spot, uh, that could be a bit of an issue. But at the moment, what they're actively trying to spot is instead SJR, because they know fine well SJR's AI is terrible, and it means that the Hippo basically has free reign to fire at him as long as he's spotted and SJL really can't do much in return. He's got one smoke left so he's going to have to use it carefully and although the CV hasn't been dropping he has to basically act like every single pass of the planes could be an active drop. You can't afford not to because of course the CV if they see you just giving them the opportunity they will take it so it's particularly rubbish when you're in a low health, not low health, a low AA uh, destroyer and the enemy CB knows it. But then they have changed their active spotting to the Yorktown and uh, yeah there's going to be curtains for the Yorktown with the, the Hippers guns. It's not got the best rate of fire but it does have that German 8 inch HE with the, uh, the extra penetration so yeah that's more than good enough to take care of a squishy carrier. And lo and behold, there is the enemy remaining, uh, the submarine as well. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. And that's the tier 8 sub, rather than the, the tier 6. So that's going to be even more fun. Because <laughs> it was the tier 6 that he took care of earlier, which was definitely the, the less dangerous of the two. This hipper though, I mean, he might get to gun them down. He's got fires going, Hipper doesn't have a heal, of course, but he's still blocking the cap. And they've lost the carrier, which means they've lost those points, and the Hipper was blocking the cap. This is going to be pretty tough to get this done. It's doable, there are still two of them, and Viper Sox is actually full health, he's in a pretty fast destroyer overall. Not the fastest, but Asashio can move. And um, they're kind of, they're, they're splitting, I think they must have been in communication here, they're, they're splitting their resources. So he, uh, Viper is going after the CV, who he can hit with his torpedoes, because Asashio can't hit a lot, it's basically battleships and CVs. And uh, SJR meanwhile is going for this uh, this submarine, this sturdy. Now the the, the British subs are not great <laughs> overall. I know they made some changes to them. I think they're uh, proposing to make more changes, but I think the main feature is that yeah they they only have the uh, homing torps, the acoustic torps. So he's make the pass. He's doing his drops and. It was successful, but unfortunately, I don't know if he forgot, but yeah, he ate the storm, uh, the stormed torpedo, or possibly the stern torpedo, and that has a rather unfortunate consequence in that um, although they might not have won regardless, 
uh, yeah, it it absolutely seals the the seals the final nail in the coffin. <laughs> That's definitely a phrase, because um, Viper isn't able to kill the Hornet. He lands torpedoes. You can see from the health on that Hornet, he might have actually been able to catch off in the distance the torpedo impacts while the Hornet was not visible. Um, but yeah, uh, it's not enough to kill the Hornet. It almost is, but it's not quite. Meanwhile, Viper gets reset, although I'm not sure he would have had time to cap this out anyway. So, yeah, this is really unfortunate. You know, Viper does make the last, absolute last ditch effort, and maybe if he'd had a couple of more seconds, he might have been able to get that kill. Sasha's guns aren't great, but for a CV on a couple of thousand health, they're good enough. But that just wasn't the time. So, if maybe... A couple of things had worked differently in that it could have been a win, but as it was, it was a very, very hard fought defeat. And it was just the close, almost but not quite uh, killing of the Hornet that allowed the enemy team to win that one. So, yeah, that was, um, that was quite a, a. I don't know if nail biting is the right word, but it's certainly a very, very close game. One of those games where it wouldn't have taken much to tip it the other way. And certainly considering how hard they were pressed by the enemy team to come that close to still winning it anyway. You know, there's, there's something entertaining about that, I think. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this. Uh, I know it's not been a super high energy voiceover. I've been struggling to do this one for days, but uh, here I am managing to do something at least. So... Yeah, it's been... I don't know. I've just been tired recently, and I don't know if it's work picking up again or something else, but yeah, it's certainly not helping with uh, productivity outside of work. Even within work, it's definitely not helping productivity. But anyway, there's always Sam. So if you enjoyed this, you can do all these little things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.